Calculus! This is AP Calculus. Okay, no cool intro today. Okay, so, uh, Ben, Rochelle, you're gone. It's just me and Arrow here having this lovely day on self-checks. All right, so we have this function in front of us. G of x is represented by this accumulation integral from negative 2 to x, and we're trying to find g of 2. So when I do that, and by the way, I should make a note that this is one of the first self-checks where it's not pulled from an AP uh, question, so this won't be, you won't see this as an AP question if you're looking online, um, which also means there's not really points that I can give you. Uh, I can give you the general way that you might get points, but there's not an official scoring guide. All right, so it's going to be the integral from negative 2 to 2, because I'm plugging in 2 for x, and I'm plugging rest of this in f of t dt and that's going to be equal to this area between negative 2 and 2 so if I look at this bound from negative 2 to 2 I need to find all of this area and I'm going to cut this in this piece so this rectangle down here is 1 by 1 2 3 4 1 by 4 so it has an area of 4 this circle up here it has a radius of 2 and again it's going to be pi r squared but it's a semicircle so literally divide by 2, semicircle, the actual definition is it's not part of a circle, it's exactly half of a circle. Um, R is 2, so 2 squared is 4, 4 divided by 2 is 2, so this half area up here is 2 pi. So you literally add up um, all of that and you should get the answer which is just 2, where were we, yeah, 4 plus pi, 4 plus 2 pi. Questions? Yeah, so you might not get full points if you don't yeah, write the setup. You have to write the whole everything. Whole thing, everything, yep. Um, if I were guessing, I would say you'd probably get a point for the answer, so I'll say plus one for the answer. And maybe, I'm like 50 50. I would say, yeah, sure, plus one for the setup. So out of two points. All right, so for part B, we need an equation for the line tangent. Whenever you see equation, line tangent, those three things, equation, line tangent, those three words, it always tells us we're going to be using y minus the y coordinate equals to slope times x minus the x coordinate of whatever point we decide to choose. And hey, and I'll write that underneath here. That's the x coordinate, x1. This is a y1. That's our slope m. Or better yet, since we're in calculus, it's going to be y prime of that x coordinate. All right, we have x equals 2, so let's fill in what we knew. We got x equals to 2, so 2 goes in here. Um, when I plug in x equals 2, then I should get <laughs> this value up here, 4 plus 2 pi, which means this is our y coordinate. So when I plug in x equals 2, that's literally what I did up here. Our y coordinate is 4 plus 2 pi, so I'm going to have y minus 4 plus 2 pi. All that in parentheses, because I'm going to have to distribute this negative into each of these terms. Um, so I ran out of room, so I'm going to redo it down here, that's fine. And then I need to figure out the slope, so I need to take the derivative. So how do I do that? Derivative here, let's do it in red. The derivative, so g prime of x is going to be equal to f of x. That's the definition, that's our second fundamental theorem of calculus. It's defined by the integral, just plug in x, multiply by the derivative of x, which is just 1. It's just f of x. And f of x literally means, and I'll write that over here on the side, is that height, slope, or concavity of f of x? Height, yep, so this is just height. Height of f of x. So if I come over here to f of 2, I'm plugging in 2 here because that's y prime of 2. Height of 2 is 1. This height right here is 1. Therefore, g prime, so this implies that g prime of 1 is equal to f of 1, which is just 2. That means my slope here is going to be 2, and then I still have x minus 2. Don't do anything else to it. There it is. There's our answer. Box it. And let me get my box here up and running. Choose red outside, and nothing on the inside. There's our function. Questions thus far? So the height of the x coordinate 2 is the slope. The slope of g, yes. So the height of the x coordinate 2 is 1. Did I write 2? Oh my gosh. I am so bad. Okay, yeah, the height was 1. I don't know why I wrote 2. You're right. So the height at that point is 1. I don't know. why. That's the x coordinate. So let me come back. Sorry about that. Um, did I accidentally? Oh, it's just that erasing 
there. Maybe if I select it, then I'll grab it. Grab this, and there we go. All right, let's change this to a two. Sorry about that. Hiya. All right, there it is. Did you get that? I got all the right numbers and wrote them in the wrong spots. Oh, no. So okay. I also forgot the points of the form. Like, I got most of it, but the things weren't in the right order. Oh. So, yeah. Okay, next time, though, right? Yeah. Let's see. If we take a peek at the back side, is it going to have point slope form? It is. Part C. <laughs> part C is going to be point slope form. So, remember that. All right, and then finally, for part C here, oh, I guess, let me guess what the points would be. So you'd probably get one point if you got one, which Mr. Sindel didn't get, and then one point for the rest of the equation. That would be my guess for how to score that one. That one would probably be out of two points. And then for part C, what are all the values? Oh, wait, hold on, sorry. Mini tangent. Um, some students always ask, like, well, if you got part A wrong, if you put, like, 5 plus 2 pi because you accidentally added those two triangles in, um, and you put 5 plus 2 pi down here, does that mean part B you'd get that one wrong? Yes. yes. <laughs> that's how AP works. <laughs> like, if you get the first part wrong, it destroys the rest of your A for the rest of the letters. I'm sorry, but that's the, the cruel and unfortunate truth. All right, Arrow, I have a question for you. What is the definition of minimum? Uh, F Careful. It's F just prime. F prime. Not even yeah, F prime goes from a negative to a positive. All right. F prime, well, I guess technically we're talking about G here, so let me back up here. I'm going to make this slightly more. You have the definition correct, but since we were talking about the wrong function, we're talking about G now. So it's G prime from negative to positive, which means I'm really talking about F from a negative to a positive because the definition of G prime is just F. That's just by our accumulation integral. We know the second fundamental theorem of calculus. So I'm looking for where the f has a height change from a negative to a positive. So let me write that in a different color. I'm talking about the height change from a negative to a positive. Where does that happen? Looking at the graph of f, height goes from a negative to a positive here at 3. And then the only other height change is here from a positive to a negative. So that's not really a uh, max at all, or that's not a min at all, that's a max, this is the min. There's only one minimum value, and it's at this x-coordinate, x equals negative 3. So that occurs here at, we'll write it all out, relative minimum, you are allowed to abbreviate on the AP test, relative minimum at x equals negative 3. And then you do have to have the rationale, you have to say why. It says justify your answer, so you have to say why. And it's because, and you're using the definition, g prime was a negative, it went from a negative to a positive. So you can say was negative into a g prime greater than zero, or you can say g prime positive into g prime negative. It's whatever you want. Somehow say one of these things for your rationale. All right, so how to score yourself. I would get, and this is me purely guessing after only one year of experience, so I might be super inexperienced by now. Relative minimum, I would say probably one point for saying the x-coordinate and one point for the justification. That would be my guess. And because it's not an actual AP test, this doesn't add up to nine, it adds up to looks like six, but that's okay. So um, tell yourself what you got out of six for this question. How many points would you give yourself, Arrow? Uh, one point. Okay, I mean, we're, we're learning. It shouldn't be six yet, unless you're some weird person like Ben who can just magically get 100% every time. All right. Ben, I don't mean to belittle you if you're watching this video. You're really good. All right. Um, any questions before we move on to self-check 10.2? All right. Go ahead and give yourself 10 minutes. All right. So we are back on self-check 10.2. Arrow finished with like four and a half minutes to spare. Let's see how we did. Um, and just a note as well. Um, I have only looked at the pretest, and I don't remember very much from the test last year, but the pretest, all of the free response questions, all three of them are no calculator, but the um, multiple choice is with the calculator. That's a, a change because there is a calculator portion of multiple choice on the actual AP exam, so I'll get you ready for that. All right, moving on with this one. So we have the semicircle, blah, blah, blah. We're finding G of 3. So you showed your work this time. Good job. So G of 3. Is going to be the integral, and I'm plugging in 3 in for x, so it's going to be the integral from 0 to 3, and it's going to be f of t dt on the inside. All right, so I'm trying the integral between 0 and 3, the area under the curve between 0 and 3. So between 0, so I'm starting here. Let's make my, my line here. So here's my line. 
and that doesn't show up very well. Let's make that line red. Maybe that'll show up a little bit better. Uh, let's make it thicker. Um, let's come up to 2.1, sure. Between that line and 3, so in that point right here. So I have to find this quarter circle and that um, triangle down there. So again, if I'm talking about the quarter circle, the area of that quarter circle looks like this. It's pi r squared divided by 4, because um, it's 1 fourth of it, and then the radius is 2, so it's going to be pi times 2 squared over 4, so it's going to be 4 pi over 4, and therefore just pi. All right, so we have pi for this area, and then down here for this triangle, um, it's a base of 2, height of 1, so 2, 2 times 1 is 2, and then it's half of that because it's a triangle, so this area down here, this area is 1. All right, so I'm just adding those up, pi plus 1, so this is equal to, wait, something has gone totally wrong. It's minus 1, that's right. What's, I see what's going on. So I've been going from 0 to 3. I thought I was going from 0 to 4. So 0 to 3 should have stopped right here, not right here. Okay, my bad. So I need to stop right there. There we go. So I'm only looking for this half of the triangle, and that's a base of 1, height of negative 1, which is an area of negative 1, but it's a triangle, so this area is negative 1 half. Sorry about that. So this is negative... I'm just going to do 0.5, or you can do 1 half as a fraction, it does not matter. Um, adding all those up, you get pi minus 1 half or pi minus 0.5, either way. And there is our final answer box. It, how would I score this one? Um, I would give you, I think it's just, um, I feel like you just probably get one point, let's come back here to red, one point for the answer. I feel like you probably wouldn't get any points uh, elsewhere. Um, and that's my opinion. That's probably wrong. I'll have to go look at the actual way that the AP test is graded again. Uh, for part B, um, we're talking about a maximum. So, Era, what's the definition of max? Um, F, um, max, yep. It's a sign change for, I guess, G, right? So, G oh. prime oh, yeah, G. from a positive to a negative. Positive to a negative. And... So where does that happen? So G prime is really talking about F. So the height of F goes from a positive to a negative, and we'll just make that note here. We're talking here about height. Height. So where does the height go from a positive to a negative? And it happens only here at 2. And that goes from a negative to a positive, so it has a max at 2. So we'll write a max at x equals 2, and then we have to have justification, justify your answer. Our justification is because um, we have this g prime. g prime went from a, I like using the proper mathematical notation, but you don't have to. You can say positive instead of greater than 0. It went from greater than 0 into a, I don't like my arrow, there we go, into a g prime less than 0. That's the formal definition. And how I would score this thing, so first box or answer, chunk, Ooh, a little bit, there we go. So box or answer, and um, you get one point for getting the x-coordinate, I would guess, one point for the x-coordinate, and one point for the reasoning. All right, for part C, we need the equation of the line tangent. Again, I'm seeing equation, line tangent, so I'm talking about this y minus the y-coordinate equals to the slope times x minus the x-coordinate. Um, so we have the x-coordinate. The x-coordinate is 3. So we'll say that's going to be a 3. And then the y-coordinate, we have to plug in 3. And have we done that? Aha! We did in part A. So um, the y-coordinate is pi minus 0.5. So pi minus 0.5 is going to go in this box. And then finally, we need to find the slope at x equals 3. So this is going to be taking the derivative and plugging in 3. So taking the derivative of g prime of x, we'll write that down. This is the work that we're actually working on. So g prime of 3 is what I'm looking at. So g prime of x, first of all, is just f of x because you're plugging in this x 
into here and then taking the derivative of x which is just 1 and multiplying that by the function so it's just f of x so I come down here and I say well now it is g prime of 3 that's what I'm actually looking for for the slope and that is f of 3 or the height at 3 for this graph the height at 3 is negative 1 so this is equal to negative 1 which means negative 1 goes in here and my full answer now just rewriting this is y minus, you have to have parentheses here, pi minus 0.5, or you could distribute the negative into each of these terms is equal to negative in parentheses x minus 3. Final answer, box it. All right, how would I score this one? Um, again, it's probably one point for getting the slope correct, so plus 1 for the slope right there, and plus 1 if you got the rest of the equation. And last problem, um, we have an inflection. Inflection. All right, so arrow, definition of inflection point, IP. Ooh, careful. G. Yeah, it is G, so. Which was very confusing. G double prime yeah. sign change. All right, well, let's analyze what G double prime means. So G prime of X is really F of X. We've said that before. That means if I'm talking about g double prime of x, that's talking about f prime of x. And what is that? Is that height, slope, concavity of f? What are we talking about? Slope. Yeah, this guy is talking about slope now. So if I come up here and I'm looking for now a slope sign change. So the slope is positive, 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 up. Oh! Now it's negative, negative. So I had a sign change right there. Negative, 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 negative. Still negative, negative, negative. Oh, now positive, 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 positive. There are two sign changes at x equals 0 and at x equals 3. So at x equals 0 and 3, so 0, 3, and y. We have to justify our answer. So justifying our answer, it's because, I cannot write b's, there we go, because, of a g prime sign or g double prime sign change, g double prime sign change, sign change, and there's our final answer. Box it. And how would I score this? Um, you need somehow to talk about f prime. Um, I think they. It's really hit or miss whether or not they do that. For this one, I'm randomly going to say if you somehow wrote f prime. You knew that you were talking about f prime. Give yourself a point. Uh, I'm feeling maybe not. Sometimes they do that. I'm just going to randomly say no this time. Plus 1 for x equals 0 and 3. So you have to have both of those. And plus 1 for the reason. I'm just going to do 2 points. I was going to do 3 points, but I feel like some people won't do that. Yeah, so there it is. So a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 points. How many points out of 7 did you get at the very top? What would you get, Arrow? Four. Oh man, yeah, improving really fast. And remember, these um, actual AP questions, if it was an actual AP question, is out of nine. We need a three to get a pass. So four is more than passing. You're on your way to a five. All right, that's all we have for today's self-checks.